Hello everyone, welcome to the ninth episode of Menculio with Miyakin. So for this project, I'm not gonna do anything too complex, but I wouldn't say it's something simple either. I'm going to make a nobleman, a pretty nobleman because I think I mentioned before that I'd like to make a pretty boy doll someday and today is the day. Me deciding to make this doll was just a random idea, well mainly because I'm interested in the clothes. Medias that are set in medieval time, at least the ones I've seen, always make the royalty the main characters, whether it be kings, queens, princes, or princesses, and anyone below the rank are always the supporting characters. That's why I don't really want to make a king or anyone from the royalty rank. Anyway, let's take a look at the medieval ranks. If the royalty rules, and the knights protect, and the peasants being miserable, what do the nobles do? I'm really asking because I really don't know. Can anyone answer in the comments? Thank you. Okay, let's get started. For the base, I knew I'd do a hybrid, but there's two candidates here. First is a Jackson Jekyll head with a BTS body. Their skin tones don't look that different, so I wouldn't have to do color matching. But Jackson has that eyebrow piercing, which I don't know how to deal with. The second candidate is a Heath Burns head with an Alistair body. There's some color matching to do, but I'm feeling this pairing more. Plus, people have been saying that Heath has the most handsome sculpt, and I have spares of both Heath and Alistair's, whereas I only have one BTS doll, so let's proceed with this pairing. Remove both of their heads. I asked around how to put a monster high head on an after after high body, and people suggested to enlarge the neck hole, and to be honest, I'm scared of doing that because I might go overboard. So instead, I did the opposite, I trimmed the neck peg because I figured if I trimmed the neck peg too much, I could just patch it with epoxy. And it worked. Let's try putting the Alistair head on the Heath body. This looks ridiculous and it's not exactly compatible. So this is what we're actually going to work with, the neck is such a tight fit and it makes it appear long but I kinda dig it. I removed the head again and erased the factory paint with pure acetone. Heath has pointy ears so I round off the pointy tips and sand those parts because we're making a human not an elf. Then I clean the head with some wet wipes. I always find ever after high boy body has awkwardly short lower legs, so I'm going to make them longer. Start by cutting them off. I fill the cavities with tin foil and hot glue. My old glue gun went up in flames, that's what I got for investing in a $1 hot glue gun, so I bought a $4 one. I connect the parts with stainless wire. Fill most of the gaps with more tin foil. Then console them with epoxy. After the epoxy has cured, sand it. And the lower legs broke off. Who knew minor body modification could be such a hassle? But then again, minor body modification demands you to be seamless while it being fragile. Whereas doing major body modification, you build up layers of epoxy that will reinforce the overall structure. Let's stop cutting corners and redo the whole thing using epoxy entirely. The addition feels pretty strong now, so we can move on to color matching. Here I'm mixing the paint. This looks pretty good. Add distilled water so we can apply the paint using an airbrush. I covered the entire body except the lower legs because those are the only parts that need to be color matched and of course the head as well. 
I give those parts for layers of paint and the lower legs for layers of matte varnish after that. Here's what the lower legs look like after color matching. I think I did pretty well. Now we can remove the protection. I primed the body two times with MSC before blushing it with soft pastels. After blushing the body, I sprayed it again with MSC and gave it four layers of matte varnish. I must have done something right with the matte varnish mixture because the surface feels really nice to the touch. I gave the head three initial layers of MSC before blushing it, and I gotta say, he looks fantastic in natural skin tone. Gave the head another spray of MSC, then color the lips and map out the eyebrows with soft pastels. Another spray of MSC and we can start sketching the eyes using watercolor pencils. Heath has a pretty divine eye mold so I just follow it, it helps to make things more symmetrical. Once I'm happy with the sketch, I sprayed a layer of MSC to save the progress then start filling in the colors. I'm giving him green eyes. I keep building up the colors until his features look vibrant enough. I add the water lines and the lip line. Using a black watercolor pencils, I draw on the eye lines and the pupils. Dot on the eye shines and seal the deal with the final spray of MSC. Here's the finished face up, uh, it's pretty subpar if I gotta be honest, and why does he look like Rosie Huntington Whiteley? For the hair, I've already made him orange wefts and I'm giving him a side part. I trim the hair every time I finish gluing a row to make it manageable. I do that until I have the scalp covered. We glue the part. With a damp toothbrush, I tame down the hair. After the hair has dried, I try to make it even flatter with a heated metal tool. Using a heated metal chopstick, I style the bangs to have that swirl. This is a look, but it's too comical, so let's trim it. I think we can put the head back to the body now. Because the neck is such a tight fit, putting the head back on was really scary, and the circumference of the neck hole did crack, but luckily nothing too noticeable. And of course, I messed up the hair during the process. Let me restyle it. Be right back. Let's go, Chucky. I used diluted glue to make the hair lay flat so it actually looks slick. For some reason, all the hairs I've done always exceeded my expectations and I never felt confident doing hairs, but I got that going for me. Moving on to the clothes, let's start with the undershirt and here's the pattern. So the back pieces to the front piece by the shoulders. Then I hem the neck hole, make little snips and glue down the seam allowance before top stitching it. Here's what the finished neck hole looks like. Now we can attach the sleeves. I want the bottom of the sleeves to be puffy so I made two rows of basting stitch like this and I tie off one end. On the other end, you will have four strands of thread. Separate them, grab two strands from the same side and pull them together the fabric. Here I'm matching it with the width of the cuff, once I get that right, I tie off that end as well. You can get her with one row of basting stitch, but it won't be as tidy, so just do it with two rows. So the cuffs to the sleeves. 
I already hem the bottom of the cuffs as well. If some of the basting stitch is still showing on the outside, you can get rid of that now. So the sides. Turn it inside out and hem the bottom. Then sew the opening tabs. Let's try it on. It fits great, all we have to do now is attach the snaps to finish the undershirt. Now the pants. The pants are gonna be pretty simple but I don't want them to look too plain so I'm gonna add some decorative stitches using this gold thread thingy. This stuff does not behave like regular thread. It's really springy, I don't know I bought it from a fishing store but I made it work. I added the decorative stitches and hemmed the leg holes. Put the pieces right sides together and sew the front and back seams. Sew the inner legs. For the waistband, it's this rectangular fabric, sew the ends together, creating a loop. Turn it right side out, fold it in half, and iron it like so. Sew the waistband to the pants but leave a gap. Insert the elastic through the gap with the help of a safety pin. Sew the elastic with both of its ends overlapping each other. I sew the gap closed, flip the waistband up, and the pants are done. Let's try them on. They fit nicely. Now the vest. Here's the pattern. It looks intimidating and it's pretty much as complicated as it looks. Let's put the lining pieces aside for now. Sew the front pieces to the back piece by the shoulders. Grab the collar and the shoulder cap pieces, you know those parts that jut out from the shoulders. I don't know what they're actually called but let's just call them shoulder caps. I sew these parts to pieces of fabric. Like this, trim the excess and flip them right side out to complete these parts. They stitch the shoulder caps to the center of the armholes. Sew the armhole linings on top so the shoulder caps are sandwiched. Trim the seam allowance, flip the armhole lining to the inside, iron it, then top stitch it. It should look like this. Now we can base stitch the collar. Like this. Now it's time to assemble the lining. Sew the lining, make sure everything lines up. Trim the excess and the corners, then turn it right side out. I added decorative stitches, I think they look pretty cool. And also sew the bottom lining of the back piece. All we have to do is sew the sides. I know I didn't sew the lining correctly, but I made it through, okay? Let's try on the vest. It looks cool. For the closure, I'm gonna use something different. I'm gonna use clasps. Let's sew them on one side. I ended up using four clasps, and on the other side, we're going to make thread loops. Start by making a stitch twice in the same place for reinforcement like so. Bring the needle back to the front. Slide the needle under the stitch and bring the thread over the needle and pull to make a knot. You're basically making knots until you reach the other end. Bring the needle to the back and tie off the thread, that's how you make a thread loop.
and the vest is finished. I think the clasps really add something. I'm gonna glue on some half beads to possess the outfit. For the shoes, I'm just gonna paint these boots a darker brown. I gave them three coats. After the paint dried, I give the boots three layers of watered down matte varnish to protect the paint and make them no longer sticky. And with that, we can call it a doll. I named him Theodore because I feel like you would hear that name in the medieval era. I'm happy with the vest and the hair. The face up is, eh, not really my best work, but I still like it, I guess. What do you think of him? Does he pass the pretty boy check? Does he actually look like a nobleman or does he look princey? Princey? Prince-esque? Pretty boys in real life remind me of meerkats. They don't necessarily look like meerkats, I just associate them with meerkats. And this doll reminds me of a meerkat, so mission accomplished, I guess. Oh, and also the next doll will have a connection with Theodore. The first canonical relationship in the peculiar universe, y'all. Guess what that is in the comments. Anyways, that is all for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe if you want to. See you in the next one. Bye.